right, look at that. We are live <laughs> from our remote <laughs> locations on the Dev Talk Show. We're not in the Malvern studio tonight, but as you can see, you've got me, Chris Gomez, and we've got Andy Schwamm, and we are using some different tech, but uh, but here we are. Here we are nice here. Job. This is this is really cool. I have a question actually. Rich is Rich Ross is only in the chat with us, and I'm right. wondering if he can tell us how the audio sounds. Uh, it's a little hard for us to tell when we're doing this. I think. Uh, sounds okay, great. Uh, awesome. That's cool. That's good. All right. So welcome to uh, the Dev Talk Show here on October 23rd uh, at 8:30, and uh, we've already got our first guest right behind me. And, uh, and yeah, <laughs> hey Sam. <laughs> yeah, Sam just popped in. So, um, and we're so tonight we're just on Mixer, and but we are the FTO protocol is enabled. I am seeing that almost the moment Sam does anything, it seems to be appearing right on the stream. So you know, I want to thank our two new followers tonight, Boss Cylinder Six Thirty Two and Rich Ross. Yeah, thank you me. for uh, joining the stream. I don't think you're following the stream. Because you're I'm right, I'm right, behind, you're right me. behind me. All right. So, um, so for developer talk, you know, uh, we just uh, we just finished Philly.net Code Camp, and uh, tons of great speakers there. Um, <laughs> why did it take so long to follow? Uh, we had tons of great speakers there, and one of them, um, uh, lots of great different topics. But I know you interviewed uh, Chris Love on the air. Yeah, it was really great. We did, uh, in between some of the sessions, we did some interviews, and uh, we had Chris Love, um, and I don't know if that's posted yet into the YouTube archives, right. but we have, we have, uh, we, we did a great interview with Chris, and, you know, Chris is passionate about two things, and we talked about both of them, and I think the interview is pretty good, and I, I hope people will, will enjoy it. Of course, he talked about progressive web apps. And yep. can you guess you weren't there? But what do you think the other topic he talked about was? Would you? The other topic he talked about was avoiding fast food JavaScript frameworks. Well, that kind of plays into it. Well, he did. He, did. he uses that phrase, fast food. Yeah, uh, that SEO. was my guess. I totally well, guess. Oh, it SEO. Relates. SEO. He, he is. You know what? I, he is talking a lot about SEO these days. That's right. And. Um, and uh, and so basically, that's a big part of SEO as far as he's concerned because it has to do with performance. And he is, you know, I talked about in, in the interview with him, and I called him out on this in in a fun way. Like he is not without, uh, not shy about sharing his opinions oh, yeah. Yeah. and passion mm -hmm. about this stuff. And it right. really comes out and makes for fun, uh, fun interview. I think. Yeah, yeah. No, he's very opinionated about how he thinks is a great user experience for your website. And I think that's important is, is, you know, we all prioritize things and he has prioritized the, the person using the website's experience, number one, and their ability to find your content is very high on his list too. So, you know, that, that informs opinions, right? That informs why we make choices. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, so, so we're going to talk about progressive web apps on today's show. Um, before we do that, do we have any, do you want to any chit chat or are we getting right into it? What do you want to do? Well, the interesting thing about, um, I think just progressive web apps is, you know, when, when I, when we talked about this being the topic tonight, the reality is, is that I, I only know a little bit about like how you build them, right? but there's a lot about the why. And, and I think, uh, there's multiple answers to the why, right? But yeah. this sort of goes into it's just another one of those technologies about, you know, why, what kind of app do you want to build? What kind of framework do you want to adopt? Because there's lots of ways to go with these things, you know? Yeah, we talked about a, a, like we it wasn't, you know, we weren't I wasn't with him for two hours. Right. Because, you know, we could go on and on about this kind of stuff. But we did talk about a couple of things. You know, I have to say that the story is getting pretty compelling to me for progressive yeah. web apps. Um, I've played around with, um, I've played, oh, so yeah, actually boss cylinder is asking, uh, how does it differ from native apps? Yeah. Right. right. And so that's, that's part of the, the question is it wasn't that many years ago where if you said, I'm going to put an, uh, I, I want to build something that, that people will use on their iPhone or their Android phone or their windows phone, <laughs> you were probably <laughs> going to build a native app, which meant right. you were learning either Objective-C or now Swift, or you were right. using Java or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But but in the end, 
I mean, that's where Xamarin popped up. Was well, hey, well, use I, Xamarin and you can cover these things. But but that's just one. That that's a native app, right? Yeah, an but that's that runs but right that doesn't that's the, not that doesn't, doesn't answer, answer the, the question. question. He's asking how does it differ from native right. apps, right? So to, and so so does it? How does it differ? I know some of the stuff. Do you want to? Do you know? You know. Well, to, the idea behind a progressive web app is, and now this is just, I, I want to make it very clear that this is one of the tenets of progressive web apps, Right. Is, is just one of its features is that all of the browsers, all of the browsers now can recognize that you've built this kind of app and allow you to give you an install-like experience, whether it's your phone or even on Windows desktop. Um, it could be, you know, an, an, an edge can recognize it and and you used to be able to pin it to the taskbar. Um, I think that there was even some talk about Windows Store beginning to pick those things up, right? Right. Yeah. So, so, but I think it's but important to say that's, that's one feature. That's yeah, one. That's, so that's similarity. So how does it differ from native apps? Yeah. I think, first of all, so it's clearly not written in a native sort of format, no. right? Like it's not built with Objective-C. No, you um, use the, or, the web. Or you're right. And it, yeah. it is basically what it is, is it is a web app. And what it is, is it's a web app running in a browser on your phone or on your desktop and that, you know, depending on where you want to do it. But you never see the Chrome of the browser to use the word right. Chrome when if right. you're using the Chrome browser. I don't mean Chrome right. browser, the any browser outer stuff, the, the outer controls stuff. and everything. So so it it is um, it is not native. Right. And. That's actually that's a, can also be an advantage of it because you don't have to update it through like the store, right? Like it's a web app, and so if you change your web app, it's it's changed, and that's yes. one way that it differs is that it's that's, always it's always updated, so to that's speak. That's something you know? that people like, right? Is that yeah? Now, unless you're in offline mode, you can run in an offline mode where you wouldn't get an update from a server, right? But right. um, yeah, no, I think that's something. Well, now you've want. described another feature: is that in if theoretically <laughs> exactly. a progressive web app can run even when you're on an airplane, right? That's the that's the example yep. we always say is right. you get on the plane, you don't have internet access, but the, the web app could still load. Yep. And as long as it doesn't have to get out to the rest of the world, it could be functional. Right. And, but these are all features of progressive web apps. Yeah, yeah. so one of the- differing, You use web technologies to build it. Yeah, one of the other differences, and this isn't really a feature, but this is a true difference, right? Because you get this, uh, they're, they're discoverable, and linkable more so than a regular uh, app would be. So what I mean by that is you can, um, they're websites. So they start off as websites. So if it's optimized properly, Google search engine, you know, you do a search for let's, we're going to, we're going to today, we're going to build the dev talk show progressive web app, right? So uh, if you were searching for the dev talk show, you're going to get our website if, right. if we do a good job at it, right? And so it's just, that is discoverable. And then from there, you can install it. You can also send people links to it in ways that are really easier than sending a link to a store app. Certainly you can you can do that. But if you're going to send a link to someone to a store app, you have to say, hey, if you're on an iPhone, here's the link. If you're on an Android, here's the link to the Android, you know, the Google Play Store. If you're on uh, Windows, I guess, here's the link to the Windows Store on your desktop, right? So they're all different. In this case, it's all the same. It's all just one. And, yeah, right. and that's kind of cool. Now, the other, I think another difference in, in theory is in theory, you don't get access to all of the phone's features, right? I, mean, I'm, I'm, I keep leaning towards phone and I have to remind myself that it can be a desktop app as well. Now, well, generally, I think you get access to the features a, a website has, which is way more than it used to have. It's it's a ton. And and Chris, I went, I was actually on Chris Love's website, right? He's got this website, uh, love to dev dot com, mm -hmm. and he's he breaks down some of the things. And so I'm just going to list a couple of things you do have access to. Now, I don't know right. really what you don't have access to, but there's stuff that you don't have access to. I, I'm fairly certain about that. You have access to the camera, the microphone video screaming, streaming, scanning of photos, barcodes. You can get barcodes out of the phone. You have right. access to the USB ports and Bluetooth yep. connectivity. You get geolocation, media capture API, video and audio playback. You even have push notifications yep. under yep. most circumstances. And what it says, what he had on his website is that Apple um, 
doesn't really do uh, push notifications, I guess. But what he suggests, and there's workaround for this, is you detect, oh, it's running in Safari, so maybe we fall back and use an SMS notification as a, you know, it's a little bit of a hack. But um, but the point is, that's like a lot. So there's not yeah. many, like I try to think about what's a scenario that I would need more than that, you know? Well, um, it's the same kind of scenarios that, and I know we keep talking about phones, but, you know, when you write an, an, a native app for the phone, you've still got to ask permission for access to things. Sure. So, right. Um, I think though that in a lot of cases, if you know, you, you maybe you you want to break away from the the app stores, or you just decide I want to re I want to make sure I want to build. If you want to try for that nirvana of building one application, <laughs> then maybe a, yeah. a progressive web app's the way to go, right? Or at least it's something to look at. I'm really thinking about trying this for some stuff, and and I don't just mean playground. You know, I mean it at work. Um, we've dabbled with. Um, Ionic for web apps. I don't know if you're familiar with Ionic. It's um, yeah. it's similar in one concept where with Ionic, you're you're um, you're building a web app, right? But since it's Ionic framework, it uses the Cordova libraries and then the Ionic libraries on top of that, and basically gets installed as an app and gets distributed through the App Store uh, or the Play Store, you know, whatever whatever the store is. Right. But um, and you do have access to these native features, all done through this sort of like, again, the code is all JavaScript in, a, in a, an Ionic app. It's, it's in my case, it was Angular, it was TypeScript. And they built these sort of shims, I guess, is what it really is. That's what Cordova is all about, right? You know, you're familiar with Cordova? Yeah, I mean, for a while, Cordova was kind of the, the premier way yeah. to, to build. Yeah, right. You could build mobile apps or apps that work anywhere using web technologies, but, and I mean, I mean this stuff, that, that still works. I just think that probably part of the reason for the shift towards what's bundled as progressive web apps is is now the browser is giving you this support right in the browser, where instead yeah. of you saying, okay, I, I want to use browser technologies, but package it into an Android pack or an iOS package. And, you yeah. know. and it was, it was problematic. I will just be honest. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. But it was also problematic where there was features that worked on Sam is just like buzzing around behind you there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was um, sometimes things would work differently on an Android than it would on an, on an uh, iPhone mm -hmm. or vice versa. And there would be features that you could use on one and couldn't use on the other. And it was really it was a kind of a pain. And honestly, it was still an extra skill that you had to learn because it was there was stuff on top of just building an Android app, right? It was still an Ionic app. And so, uh, and then at the same time, you know, we talk a lot about Microsoft technologies and, and a lot of people really like Xamarin, mm -hmm. but I will say that I sort of struggled with it and I'm sure I would have gotten good at it if I spent time learning it. But right. again, I think the draw to PWA is it's whatever you do on the web. If you're, if you're Chris Love and you do straight up vanilla JavaScript, HTML and CSS, then you can build a progressive web app. If you like Angular, you can build a progressive web app. If you like um, React, you mm -hmm. can use that to build a progressive web app. Now, right. you know, Chris's argument is, well, those are slower. And I said, yeah, but hang on. I said, you know, this was one of those ones where I said, Chris, wait, hang on, buddy. If I, I know you're going to kill me for making a progressive web app with, um, with Angular, because you're going to tell me it's going to be too slow, and that's his opinion, and maybe he's right, but... I said, wouldn't it be better, though, than I was not building a progressive web app and I was just building a website with Angular? And then he was on board. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Build the progressive web app. Then he wants me to take it to the next level and get rid of the framework. And, you know, that's a whole other story. Right. But, um, right. I mean, the idea here is that you get to use the same exact technologies, the same choices that you – most people that want to make a progressive web app probably have to have a web presence. Yeah. Probably. I guess that's not always the case, but you probably do. So, yeah. and do by the way, we've a got a new uh, we've got a new uh, person joined. Amit. No, I think that's I think that's Amit got his name changed. Oh, got his name changed. Yeah, I think I think that's correct. I think that he got his uh, his handle changed there on Mixer, right? Oh, his boss that's cylinder what, is the same as Amit. That, that's what I think happened. Yeah, cool. Well, whoever but you I, are, welcome. I guess I'm not hundred percent. Yeah, they'll Positive, let us know. But that's what I think happened. So they will let us know. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think you're right about that. Like, 
you can have a mobile app in the app store without ever having a website. Right. Right. And you kind of need, you need to have a website to, um, to, uh, you know, to have a, a, a progressive web app. Cause let's face it. What's it called? It's, it's a progressive web app. Right. It's saying, and I think there's that whole theory of progressive, right? Is yeah. that it can progress. It can start as a web app. It progresses to your device or your desktop and, and it could take advantage of more and more features and things like that. And so, yeah. you know, so the, um, and by certainly, the way, like, certainly yeah. that, that word P that I mean, again, cause we always have to come up with, or we have to use the PWA acronym or something. So that, that is a, it's a container for several different things. One of them being installable uh, as if it were an app. Another one is that uh, displays and operates well, no matter the form factor, no matter whether you're connected or not, um, what your browser's capabilities are. So, but this is all kind of, and there's some other things that we haven't even discussed that are features of it. But I think that's important is in order to qualify as an app that, that can take advantage of this and be installable, you have to meet some requirements and then the browsers will say, okay, yeah, yeah. You're an app that I'm willing to to put a, an icon on the home screen for, if it's a phone. Or yep. same thing with a website, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you're a website that I'm willing to show uh, push notifications for. If you meet these requirements, then it's like, yes, I will. I will do these things. Um, and the funny thing about it is, is the list of things at first doesn't necessarily seem related when I think if somebody just put up some bullet points, which, you know, I don't think we have a, like a slide ready, of course, but no, but if somebody just put up some bullet points and said, this is what makes a progressive web app. Um, what you find is that you go, huh? I, I, I guess I wouldn't have thought of these uh, particular things being all together. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find it. For example, I'm looking online for a couple of things and I can share my screen and we can share your screen. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of good resources for it. Um, matter of fact, you know, to give props to Chris who, you know, sort of started Chris love who started this yeah. conversation. Yep. Um, I'm going to, I'll bring up his website and then, you know, we're going to get into a demo and, and basically what I want to do today. Uh, my goal is everybody's told me this is really easy to take a regular website and turn it into a progressive web app. So we're going to try to do that after we talk about it for a few minutes. Now I do know one of the, and I'm going to, let me switch to my, if I can do this. So now I'm also working the master controls here and this should bring up my screen. Yep. Oh, look at that. Looks good. <laughs> hey man. So we're using, uh, we're using go light stream to do our streaming tonight. And, um, it's a web based thing and it's pretty interesting. I have, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this, but, um, I built a few scenes and, and this is one of them. So, uh, this is Chris's website, love to yep. dev. Right. Um, and he talks a lot about PWAs and he's got this whole section on it. Um, where he talks about all his different, you know, he talks about all the different features and stuff like that. One of the things that he said over and over again, one of the requirements, here's technical requirements. And so here we got it, right? Must be secured with HTTPS. Yeah. And, you know, he's practically laughing when he says that because right. you know why, right? Because I heard well, you say, right. It's like, who's not doing that now? Like, you know, we should be. Yeah, um, but a lot of the web isn't, right? A lot of the web isn't. And, yeah. you know, a lot of basic websites, if you're collecting data, you owe it to your users, you know, you, you, everything should be HTTPS now. I mean, it's sort of, um, well, not just, of, not just that you're, you know, that you're serving over the HTTPS link. Like you also got to get away from the mixed content problem, right? Where you're even serving images one way and you're serving. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. That's a good point. Which yeah. it, there's something that I actually want to, to see if I can look up here while you're, while you're getting moving is, um, is, uh, I believe, we are not very far away from the major browsers making it so that if you aren't HTTPS 100%, that that they will yell at the user the way the user gets yelled at today for other like certificate mismatches yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, right. So essentially, the point of it is to scare users away from your site. So yeah. like now is the time to get this right. 
Yeah, and I tell you, I don't know. I'm not. I, I just hear like conversation about from people like Chris Love and and other people I you know I talk to that even if they're not scaring you away from it now, um, I think it's the kind of stuff that affects your rankings on something like Google. Like there's so many things that affect your ranking, um, so you just may not be coming up high in the search either, right? Which is another another you know aspect of that. And I guess the search engines and are sort of taking a um, they're taking a level of like it's their responsibility to make sure that that users of the internet find good safe content i think yeah, yeah. i think they're taking it as their like their obligation to because they don't ne necessarily need to right there's no reason why they, they need to do that i guess but right i mean um, I, I don't know exactly what date this is but i know uh, i was looking i was hoping to find like a blog post or something maybe for chrome or firefox or anybody but there is a date coming where where they will show you the the this website is not secure warning just as if you came to a site that certificate was invalid. Wow. And and just purely because you're not HTTPS. Yeah. So, so the other the other thing you need is this web uh, web manifest file. Yes. And uh, it's basically just a file that um, you know identifies certain features. I think it has like off the top of my head like the name of your app, the description of your app. Uh, some of the, I guess maybe the icons are lo listed in there and stuff like that. So it's just a bunch of stuff that that uh, the the browsers need to sort of like install you on the machine locally and that kind of stuff, right? right? Uh, it's and and so we're going to get into this. I want to try this thing out that Chris made. Chris has something called. Uh, let me see. Wait, hang on. I got to switch over to my notes here. Um, Chris has. Uh, where was it? Um, uh, where'd I go? I had a link. It seems to be gone. Um, what happened to my notes? I think they're... Oh, that's weird. Oh, here it is. Oh, PWA Starter. Yeah. So let's try this. So this is another one of his sites. Now, this is going to build for us. And we'll try this. And I, I certainly hope it works. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's going to create that manifest file for us. Okay. And it will even create the icons for us. He says it'll create like 200 of our icons. Now, I'm not saying you have to use Chris's starter kit, right? Um, but I think it's going to make for a good demo um, and, you know, a quick way for us to get started. But it will take, basically take our Square uh, Dev Talk Show uh, logo and turn it into like the 200 various icons that you need and stuff like okay. that. So, yeah. um, but, I, you know, I searched around for other stuff. And this was a – this Smashing Magazine has a whole series – but I read through some of this today. So uh, like you, well, I'm a novice here. I've read a few articles. I have never tried to make a progressive web app, but I thought this was good. And it has, um, it has uh, some, you know, why progressive web apps, use cases, characteristics. And this sort of tells you like what makes a, a progressive web app so special. Um, you know, it's installable. We're talking about that. It's like an app, it's responsive. Right. Um, and then they just pay, they show you how to get into it, and I didn't really, um, you know, do much. But you know, they're starting with an index.html. It's just a web page, right? So anyway, um, there's lots of good resources on the web. Um, I think there's a decent amount of resources to get you started. You know, um, you want to give it a whirl? Yeah, sure. So I haven't tried this yet, um, <laughs> but. I'm willing to do it on uh, live on the air and take a shot and see how well this works out. Now he says it doesn't work for all. It d doesn't work for all sites. I mean, I think your site has to have certain characteristics in order to make it work. But um, I need to get the. We have this site that we built. It's not really, really live, but it's out there. Uh, the Dev Talk Show test, um, and I'm just going to click on this and show you what our website looks like. It doesn't even have a real, um, you know, DNA, you know, domain name or something like that. It's just our Azure website site. But this was what we were hacking together for the Dev Talk Show, right? Right. Um, doesn't take advantage of any real great progressive features, uh, you know. But what the heck, right? So, because this is all I'm looking, my, I, this will be a success to me if we can take and create a web, uh, a progressive web app that we can install on our, my desktop here or on our phones, um, whether or not they take advantage of uh, location services, geolocation, you know, we, maybe that's another day. 
right? Right. It doesn't have to be every feature. Like that's one right. of the things that I think is 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 key is that this bundle of features that has been brought together to mean progressive web apps. You don't have to take all of them. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you can get to, right. one thing working first, right? Which is yeah. like uh, the like the service worker, so that you can work offline. That's like maybe you do that first, or maybe you say, "Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this manifest so that it's installable." Yeah. Uh, so, so here we go. I'm just going to paste in my site into here and see what this does. Um, cannot fetch existing manifest. That is true. We do not have a manifest. Okay. okay. No. So he says, no worries. If you don't have a manifest, just click the next button. We don't. Perfect. PW host home screen icon generator. Upload your site's logo or image you want to use. So let's do that. I'm going to take this one. Um, okay. So now it's going to help us build out the manifest, right? And We'll see this thing because it's just going to generate some text, but he's putting some stuff in there. So I think we want to have a better name for it, right? So we're going to call it the Dev Talk Show, right? I assume I can put spaces in here, um, but I don't know. I'm going to try it, okay? Description, um, all the great stuff, uh, you know, provides, how about this, provides access to all of the of the dev talk. So you got to watch me type, right? Shows goodness, right? Yeah. Now, by the way, is it provides access to all of the the dev talk shows goodness, <laughs> or is it just to all of the dev talk shows goodness? I don't <laughs> Doesn't think matter. There would be two does. Uh, so this is about the direction. So we're going to be left to right. Um, and the start URL. So um, your home screen shortcut will load this URL. Now he has it as this source home screen. I don't know if that means I'm supposed to leave that. Uh, yeah, I think. And that... we can always tweak these things in the. In the uh, I have a feeling know. this is a, a practice to to allow it to maybe work offline because your start page is going to have to, for a fallback, your start page has to have a, you know, you have to have like some static site and then maybe this, this enables that fallback. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously when you break down what that really is, it's a query string. Like that. Is, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's but, not starting with the URL. It but says the URL. That, right yeah. Now. So it's like just home or index or whatever. Um, but then with that query string. So I, I'm going to guess that if we did a little research, we would find that there's a standard practice where, where people, you know, when somebody clicks the, when somebody clicks the home button, they want to know that the user clicked, clicked the installed icon. That's why it says UTM source. I, I can't think in my head what UTM stands for yet, but yeah. I think what this is trying to indicate to the website is that, Hey, the user started this from, uh, from their phone or like they, they hit on their home screen or they, they did it from their desktop or something. Yeah. I'm just you thinking could, like we're I mean, live, you could, but you we could can take play that around. Out, right. This is, I figure we're live. Let's just play around. Yeah, and why, sure. when I search for this, it says, why is add to home screen web app install banner, not showing there's a web app. And oh, look, look, here's an article by Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the, he's got a lot of content out here. Um, and if we took the real time, so like I'm not really doing him a service, by just trying out his tool here live without really reading it and understanding it. I hope I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, well, like uh, you said, I think, think you said control to add to home screen prompt. Was that paragraph there? Uh, where was it up? Oh, that one right there where yeah. it says, maybe you don't want to rely on the browser logic. Uh, uh, maybe that's not quite it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just leave it the way it is. It yeah. looks like it accepts that. I don't know what scope is. Uh, it's also got a slash, and I think that's probably what we want. Like, it's the whole URL or whatever, right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I guess we want this standalone, an app-like experience. No browser. Yeah, definitely. Um, orientation is portrait. That makes sense. Um, theme color. Oh. Color used in the browser and system mode to make your app immersive. 
So look at this. So um, you know what I can do? I can go to our, uh, oops, I can't do that while this is open. Hang on. If I go to here, right? Okay. Do we want to grab like this color, you think? Sure, why not? Yeah, so I have it's this. It's unique um, enough that we'll know, right? Yeah, right. I've got this thing. So let's oh, do so that. Oh, so what is this thing? What are you using there? Oh, yeah, this is a uh, some kind of Chrome extension that I installed at some point called Color Picker iDrop. Oh, okay, that's pretty it's cool. It's just a nice little, yeah, yeah, it comes in really handy, right? So I'm just yeah. going to grab this because I think that page supported it. So you're getting the hex color, it looks like, right right from there. Very nice. Oh, oh, this was a picker. Look at that. I didn't even <laughs> notice that. Good for you, Chris, right? It's got all the features in here. Um, I think I can do it. Uh, where do you do the thing where you add it? Uh, yeah, you might have to add them in. You might have to <laughs> to, to go ahead and put it into to red, green, and blue there. Yeah. Yeah, so in order to do that, I have to come back over here. Uh, does this thing give me an option? Was there an option to do that? I mean, we're kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See that? 73. I'm going to write that down. 73. Oh, my gosh. We're using like a pen or something. I know. I am using a pen over here. Look, look, look. Oh, my gosh. On paper even. Wow. That's well, amazing. it was actually easier. You know, it's so I've, funny how it is. I haven't so, seen one of those. <laughs> what is that he's using? I haven't seen that stuff. So I guess it goes like this, right? 73, uh, 138, and 152. Yeah, I guess that looks like it. Okay. Background okay. color, I guess, is white, right? I would say our background color is white. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see, service worker, and it's checked, so I guess, is this a checkbox? Yeah, look at that, that's cool. Service worker member represents an intended service worker registration in form of a registration object. Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, well, I mean. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, one of the, one of the it's, yeah. tenets of, of, of. PWAs is yep. that you have the service worker running. Yeah, out. yeah. As a matter of fact, it was right on one of these pages that we saw, right? That it said, yeah. And so I think what it's going to do is it's going to create a file called SW, serviceworker.js. And I think the scope's going to be fine, you know. Um, look at this. Category member describes the expected application categories to which the web application belongs. I guess this is like tags that we would want to put in here, you know? Right. I'm looking at this thing on the left, by the way. I mean, sorry, on the right, there's this whole thing. Is this my manifest or is this my manifest? I think this is my manifest. Look at that. Yeah, that's the manifest, but I think it's, it's building also building. Uh, is that what's next is like a, a starter website that would implement all this stuff? I think it so. It kind of looks like it is, yeah, doesn't I think it? So. Or and maybe got all the bases needs, covered. Well, maybe this is on... the stuff that needs to go in the head. See, all this is within the head. Yeah. Although I don't see an end head tag, but I think what he's probably going to say is take this. Right. It all looks this like goodness is, is all the stuff that you need yeah. to make it work on Apple stuff because it looks like this all looks like specifics. <laughs> well, look here's I sure. yeah you're right that this yeah. is iOS but but in addition, um, I'll bet there's a link so here's this manifest file, right? And you have to put that in your in your their head right. So this he's just generating all that stuff for us. I don't know. Let's put some categories in here right tech. Uh, uh, streaming I don't know. What do we talk about? Dot net. I'll do like dot net just in case. I don't know if the dot dots work, you know? Right. All right. That's good enough for now. Right. And rating. Um, member stream represents. Oh, the international. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Right. So I'm going to click this. Just make sure I open this in a new tab and see what we got here. And I'm really just working my way playing through this thing here. Um, and I hope uh, that's okay for the people that are watching along and playing along with us here, you know? Um, I kind of thought it was going to give us the list. Um, I don't know what it is. Where is the list of ratings? Yeah, I wonder if it's uh, optional <laughs> to start. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hoping it is, right? Um, let's just see if there's like a list of them. I don't see an obvious like pick list. So let's leave it blank. 
And it's, let's see if it errors out or something like that. So we're going to give it a shot. Okay, next, um, add to home screen configuration app ID. So the identifier app used by the library to persist values. I think we want this to be like the dev talk show, you know? I think that's better, right? And the right. app name is also going to be, maybe if you have a company or something like that, I don't know, like, you know, there's a lot of ways you could look at this. So mandatory uh, requires installation. No, we're not making it mandatory. We're not assuming you have to install our website, our PWA, auto store. This is one of the cool features. Now, when I went to Chris, the, you know, one of the ways we were talking about this PWA is, is he created the schedule for Philly Code Camp as a PWA. And what I love is that it doesn't ask you to install it right away, right? I can even say, uh, I don't want to do it until someone comes back to the site like two or three times, right? And what I like about that is how many times have you been to a website? And before you can even read an article, it goes, hey, would you like to subscribe to our newsletter? Right, right, immediately. Right, right. so this is basically a way of saying, and Chris talks about it this way, is saying, you know, if you're a repeat customer or, you know, a repeat user, maybe someone wants to install it. I don't know, right? Like, so they had it as, they had it as one. Let's we'll give you the default, but I like the fact that it skips the first visit. Start delay. Oh, look at that. So even when you come in, we could delay it off a couple of seconds and see if it just pops up while we're there. Let's do that. Let's just, hopefully we'll remember that we did that. Lifespan, the prompt will be visible for 15 seconds. I don't know what this pace is. Prompt title. Yeah. How about this, right? Like, would, oh. I'm, I'm like going to town on these feet. I could have just left a lot of these things as the defaults, right? Would you like to install the dev talk show? I don't know, whatever, right? Prompt icon, look, there it is. That's our logo. Cancel button, install. This is cool. I mean, it seems pretty full featured. Now, here he wants to show us notifications, and I wonder if that's going to tell us when the thing is ready. So I'm going to allow it. Because he did say it works offline, and I'm not really sure, but um, well, it does say you can download it. Download your site's progressive yeah, web application. Look at this, right? Um, yeah, and this is what it's going to include. It's going to include an index.html. So I think it's what you said. You could use this as your index. I think we'll, we'll we'll likely take a lot of the stuff out of that and put it into our index. It's got the manifest, the icon, the readme. The uh, service worker, basic service worker with install, you have to have one, right? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what it does so, yeah. exactly. Uh, this is a library. So all right, let's 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 do this. Okay, this is cool. Uh, I'm going to download it. And I'll open it. And as promised, you know, here's what we got, right? So, um, so I think what we want to do is... We're going to take this HTML file, and I've got over here, this is our the Dev Talk Show website that we created, right? And what I was thinking about doing is just dropping the stuff into this. Does that make sense? Oh, Chris is gone. Uh-oh. Chris, you there? I'm having trouble with the camera, but I'm uh, trying to fix it. Okay. Um, so, like, we have that question, right? Like, why? Hang on. Are... Hang on. So, I have your audio, but your yeah. I have... I no, I, your camera back in the scene. Did you turn your camera off? It's off for a second. I'm trying to fix it here. Oh, okay. But but it'll be fine. It'll come back. Okay, hang on a second. I just screwed something up. Oh my. Yeah, maybe it will come back. Okay. Um, but we got your audio. So yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to um, our website here. Okay. Um, easiest way to do that. I'm going to take the manifest file. Can I copy a file out of here and paste it? Into here, I would think so, right? Is there a paste? I don't usually do that. There's no paste. I think you might be able to drag it. Oh, okay. Uh, question in the chat. Why are installable required in PWA? Um, well, I don't think it's... I'm not really sure if that's a question about there was that one field in the... Um, uh, where so I, I think, ask you if you want to make it required. And I think what that was saying is, do I want to require someone to install my website or just use it as a website? 
And that's that's what I saw in the thing we were talking about before. I don't know if that's the the right question. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so I'm answering it. Making your this go your web application installable is part of the the box of PWA features. Um, I think that you can. I think, although I'm not 100 percent sure, that you can you can take part of some of the progressive web app features without taking advantage of all of them. Like for example, I think um, sometimes what people mean by progressive web apps is apps that that are they load quickly, they're responsive, and then also depending on your browser's features, they gracefully degrade. That has nothing to do with making it installable. Right. But in order to make your app installable, there the there are there is a minimum set of requirements. One of which I believe is, you know, this manifest file, mm -hmm. and I'm actually not a hundred percent sure yet if a service worker is part of that if it's required. Um, that's what we're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. By the way, uh, the reason I was trying to drag and drop it and I got burned. Here's a classic tip for anybody who's watching. I didn't unzip my zip file. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you can't drag things out. You can read it. You can use it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You, that drag and drop motion just does not work. Um, so anyway, I dropped the manifest file into here. Okay, and then now I don't know if it goes here or maybe it needs to go in my root. And I bet it needs to go into here because it's going to go out with the website, wouldn't you think? Right. Yep. Yeah, it's going to have to be in your in your www root. Yeah. Okay. So and, that's and I believe catch. that it's I believe that it's that that manifest is declared in the markup too. Yes. So if we look at the, so I'm going to do this for now, just for, for playing around, I'm going to take this index file that he gave me and I'm just going to drop it in the root here just so we can look at it. Okay. okay. And cause we have an index file already basically, right? This is a website and it already does stuff. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the stuff that's in the head here, right? down to the, you see your content goes here. Now this is add common add to home screen template. So I guess we need to have this. This is like the UI. Yeah, this is the UI, right? Uh, not now, now it didn't change that content that I put in there. Maybe that didn't um, look generated by, he's got his, I'll put that on there, why not, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of this head stuff. And where's our head? Our head is, I mean, our, files are going to be under views, right? Right. And there's probably a layout because this is an ASP.NET page, right? So I want to get all that stuff into here, I think. Does that make sense? Maybe. I, I, I guess what we're learning now is, is do you put it on every page? And maybe you do. Oh, do you only I just, want it I, on I really home? don't know. I really no, don't no, know. no. I think you make a really good point yeah. that it would be on like that the home page. Now we only have one page right now, I think. Oh no, we have sure. the we have the uh, we have a couple pages, but but even um, if you didn't, when you when you build an MVC app, you get this you get a layout for free. I mean, yeah. they they build you one to show you how it's done. Yep. And then everything inherits that essentially. I think I'm going to take all this stuff and just drop it. I just want to see if there's anything else that's going to mess with. What well, there's we that manifest it. link that looks pretty important there. Yeah. So, and the manifest then has to be located within the um, within this path, right? right. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we do that. But um, all right. So I'm going to grab all this, and I'm going to take it. And maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. And I'm just going to put it at the bottom of the head. Okay. I don't think that's going to matter. Um, so we got all this stuff in here, okay? Now, see all this? All these uh, images that he gave me. Yeah, he made a I set of images to him. Yeah, and he said he likes to put it in this meta folder, which I think is a good idea, because it's, he, you know, the way he described it, or maybe I saw this on one of his pages, is that it's like, it's not really uh, images for your website, it's images about your website, more yeah. meta, right? And that yeah. makes sense. I like the way he, he did that. But I still believe that needs to go under WW root, right? So I'm going to drag this and put it here. Add folder to workspace or copy folder. Do you know what that means? I don't know. Um, I think you want to copy it in. 
Yeah. So Meta's in here, and look, all these, all these things that he put in there are in there. So that that's cool. Wow. Okay. So that's actually, actually, I I just think that's kind of crazy that in order to get device compatibility, oh, yeah, you yeah, create that's all those about. icons, right? And like yeah, what? That, yep. And and it's a little fragile. I you know my guess is it's a little fragile because when, uh, when Apple changes their specs. And they have a new version of an iPhone or something like that, and they want a new ratio on the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, they, you know, unfortunately, and it's not just them, right? They basically just leave it to the devs to figure it out. Like, oh, you know, I mean, because in their, in, in, it might, in our world, and you can see from the comments in his, in, in, in Chris's uh, output here, yeah, things like, "Hey, look, this still works on iOS, iPhone six, and iPhone 7. So <laughs> he's made a, yeah. a strategic decision that he still needs to support those phones. Right? Where you know, we're sitting there going, "Are you kidding me? How am I gonna, going to get to all of these phones?" And we're not even talking about the Android world. <laughs> I think he's got Android stuff on here. Oh, he does, but I mean, that, that, yeah. that's. Oh, That's yeah, even right. crazy. Yeah, right. right. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. God only knows. And look, but here's stuff if like you want. There's Windows install. and Windows 10. These are things, right. Firefox on my desktop, yeah. Chrome on my yep. desktop, Windows Store, right. I guess, type of thing. Okay. Let's keep going, though. So all of this stuff, he says, goes underneath your page's content, right? So I'm going to copy this, but I kind of feel like I want to put script tags in my footer, don't I? So um, I'm going to do this separately. So on the bottom of my layout um well not in my yeah i guess it no i guess it just goes below at the bottom of the body right I, we have a footer here already so i'm going to put this above the footer i'm guessing it only shows no maybe it goes below the footer let's just put it here what are these things these are scripts and stuff like that okay so i'm going to put yeah it here. that's some script some tag helpers yeah. i think yeah right and some then i'm going to grab this other stuff. script stuff and i'm just going to drop it at the bottom of this other stuff uh it feels like it should go like here or something like that now again if i wanted to put this right on the um the home page only we could have done that um using the script tags you know like this thing this layout page will render the script section from whatever page I have. So this could go in the script section. You know, this is good old ASP.NET, right? Um, so, okay, so we did that. We have the, um, where am I? We have the, uh, I got a few things expanded and I wanna collapse them. We've got the, uh, what's the folder I'm just thinking about? Uh, oh, inside WW, sorry, right. We've got the meta folder, okay? We've got the manifest, and I'm gonna delete this index file just so it doesn't confuse us. This is the one I dropped into the root. But I think we got everything out of it. Okay. You know, I just don't think we need to leave it there. Um, so I'm gonna delete it because I'm feeling like we did pretty good there. Um, so if we did this right, I think I can just run this right here and it might work. Now, I don't know if it works in debug mode, like if there's some idiosyncrasies to that. Uh, what would you, would you think that I could just, I was thinking about just running, you know, debugging it and running it right out of here the easy way. Can't hurt. Sure, sure we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, right? Let's <laughs> to see be fair, happens. To be fair, we have no idea, right? Yeah, we have, we have no idea. Um, and, and what's interesting about this, I think, is, you know, I think what we're seeing here is is, is the the spec for the for progressive web apps. It speaks in browser terms, right? So um, it talks about, you know, wh- what do you specify in in the HTML code? What do you what what JavaScript do you need? That's because in the end, um, for the most part, barring maybe the future WebAssembly stuff. In the end, every framework, every server-side framework is delivering HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Like, it always comes back to that, right? Right. So uh, what's interesting here is now we're trying to use a very a popular uh, enterprise framework that certainly many folks might be using at work and saying, how do we make this fit in, right? 
Yeah. And it'll be interesting because a little bit later, uh, we might get to take a look at some alternatives. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Let's see how this goes. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about wh what's next for this. So here it is. Now we have it set to not show on the first pop-up and maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> maybe we should have just had it, um, prompt us on the first try. Right. Because now we're, now we, I guess what's happening is now we can't see it ever, right? <laughs> well, I'm guessing that if I do F5 and load the page a second time, and I said to wait a few seconds, again, I don't know if that's going to work. I do remember seeing there's some requirement that it doesn't like localhost for something. I can't remember if that was, I thought that was a more of an advanced feature. So I did that. Um, I'm refreshing my page again. Um, now here's a problem. It says not secure up here, right? Right. So, um, that's a requirement is that it has to be you, on HTTPS. Yeah. Do you remember when you started this? I guess not. I guess we must've turned off HTTPS, right? Well, locally yeah. we have it on the debug mode, right? But if yeah. we go, if we deploy this thing, um, sorry, that got crazy there. Uh, if we deploy this to our website, Actually, it's showing. Oh, there it goes. What? For a second there, it was showing your light stream screen. Yeah, what happened okay. is I, I had the browser yeah, in yeah. here, and it was doing that. Bah, 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 right, you know, the like, infinite. <laughs> ah. Yeah, dangerous. Yeah. Danger. So uh, I caught that. So, yeah, I. is there a way to run this in HTTPS? Do you know how to do that? So I remember when you create a brand new... Like now, the default in .NET Core is is they create HTTPS, but mm. what I don't remember is is I don't remember what they do in Startup CS specifically. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. I see. Actually, I see what you're saying is we're not Visual Studio here. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, there is something. There is something. Isn't um, it under like you, launch or something like that? Where is it? Yeah. Like it. Where's the Where's that five thousand? Like where it tells me. Or, I I don't use. Uh, ASP.NET Core a lot. I'm kind of rusty with it. Well, and so I'm a little rusty on this too, but when you create your project, you create the, the this HTTP self-signed certificate and, and the .NET tool actually helps you do it. The .NET command line. Okay. Um, it'll, it'll install it for you and everything. But the, the and then the question is, is, is how do I get that to launch? Uh, how do I get that to launch here? I, I think the trick is, is that um, when Kestrel starts up here, it is launching your website on two ports. One of I, I think it is launching it on HTTPS. Oh. Like, like go you know ahead what? and just go to your I'm window. I'm going to run right it again now. because it might have told me like down here, like yeah. use the following URLs. Right? I'm going to just right. do it again yeah, and see what it what it gives me. Because yeah, you think it gives me two two different ports? I'm pretty it sure might... Kestrel opens on both ports by default. Okay. This yeah. is all like you can dive into startup.cs and oh, sure. customize yeah. this too. It's your light, your heart's content. But most people are going to do like what we did here is build the template and. Yeah, that's kind of like. why I wanted to do this, like really wing it, like not knowing what we're doing. Because I think yeah. that um, that's what most people, you know, do. They're going to run into whatever problems so, we're going to run into. We're going to find out right now, you know. The debug console is running, but if you click right there on oh, there go. Oh, oh, there, there it, it is. Wait, there it just went by. Yep, it was just you going by. It? Yeah, I did. Uh, it went by quick. Where the heck is it? Failed it's to. Not... Oh, look at this. Failed to authenticate HTTPS connection. Right. So maybe. Well, let's just try it anyway. <laughs> Who knows? Let's just try it anyway. So there's a good um, tip. I'm pretty sure that by default, Kestrel does exactly what you see right there. Is it says. I'm going to open it on 5000 and I'll listen on 5001 for HTTPS. Look at now, that. what happens but is it, it works. But it's not secure. But so. it's not secure. Okay, so there's there's a way there's a way to address this. Yeah. And the way you address it is you need a certificate on your machine sure, right. that allows localhost. And the .net the .net command line will build build this for you. But we don't know how to do that right now. No. Do I, we? Or do I we? Think, I think we do. Okay. <laughs> I um, think we do. I like the way this is going. We're just, you know, what we think let we me do. Just remember how to do this here. Google is, it, baby. Let's Google it. We're just, is, you know, um, we're running. I wonder if Rich is still out there. Rich, you out there? Been quiet. Hey, listen. By the way, while you're looking for that, yep. I'm going to okay, say something I that I want to try to remember to say from time to time, which is, yep. if you're watching this live, 
do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, on the archive, do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up right. and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and we definitely. would be uh, forever in your debt. Right, and, right. And, uh, you know, we hope if you're watching this on the uh, YouTube, just remember to come back to us on Mixer, uh, the Dev Talk Show, and, and come back and see us live on a Wednesday night. Yeah. What do you yeah, got, Chris? Because, yeah. you know, you ask us a question in chat, we'll answer it, right? We you, will. You can be yeah. part of the show. So and if you head fun out, for us, too. Yeah, yeah. So if you head to the terminal, which you don't even really have to go to command line, um, yeah, right. I know it's, it's great, right? Now I might have to stop. Although you're everyone. probably going to have to stop this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you want to use a command called .NET. So so we know .NET. Yeah. Okay. So we know the dot net. Right. And and you want to use a command called. I can do. And this I'm going to spell too. it for you. It's yep. called dev certs. So it's d e v dash c e r t s. Like that. All right. And then, yeah. And then you say, now the, the only thing you can really do here is just type uh, HTTPS for the first parameter. And then. Like in quotes, though? You say parameter. Like, is it in quotes or no? No, no. Okay. That's just fine. And then um, I think then after that, I think all you have to do is dash dash trust. And I think I think that's it. Now, speaking of trust, I'm trusting you right now. Yeah. Uh, you just gave me some crazy command that I'm going to type in here. This yes. gonna, could blow away my whole well, it's machine. It's actually going to install a bunch of malware. Yeah, and... exactly. And I said trust, right? Yeah. So you're good for me. I'm going to hit yeah. enter. Right. And I could not execute because it was not failed. Did I spell uh, it right? Oh, okay. So that's interesting that. Oh, .NET dev certs. So dev certs has a dash between dev and certs, okay. which is kind of unusual for most of the .NET commands. Yeah. So so if you hit up arrow a couple yeah, of times, yeah, you I know you're right. Yeah. I should have just done that. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder on that. Dev dash certs. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You might have said that, and maybe I just skipped it, and I apologize. No, that's fine. Look at this. Okay, so that's it. Oh, valid HTTP oh, is already, already present. Already present. Interesting. So, oh, uh, no, wait. wait. You're you're using Chrome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a confirmation prompt will be displayed if it was not previously trusted, but it says it was already there. And Chrome didn't say that localhost was clean because that's what happens. That's the point of this. So for everybody who's wondering what the heck is the point of .NET dev dash certs, it's to self-sign a certificate mm -hmm. that will make your machine trust localhost websites, which is fine for development. Um, you, you know, you want to be careful that no one else takes advantage of you. So, so once you've done this, keep control of your machine and don't type in crazy commands that somebody tells you to type in. But, <laughs> um, but that should what that should do is is that should when you launch this is it should make this trusted, which is of course a key part of this here. Yeah, interesting, right? So I'm going to try it again though. I could switch to. Um... Edge, if we think that would make it, or like if if Chrome's doing something odd. Well, so my what I recall is that Chrome and Edge respect the Windows certificate store, mm -hmm. and That's Firefox right. yeah. famously has its own. <laughs> so if you and this happens to me in Firefox all the time, and, and the only reason I'm kind of have some expertise with this is I I do use Firefox as a daily driver. Is that you can go, you know, Edge will use. The proxy settings that that Windows has, and same with Chrome, and and basically Chrome respects whatever the operating system says, and Firefox is like we've got our own certificate store, <laughs> we've got our own you know proxy settings. So well, look, so it stayed luck. on the five thousand one that time. That was the, I believe that was the HTTPS address, right? But it still says not trusted. Yeah, but what there. if I click it and say like. I don't care if it's invalid. Like maybe well, what is a way it to... that it says? Is it is it just not happy? Oh, maybe it's just not happy about the cert. It just says it's invalid. It's interesting to me. I wonder if the cert. I wonder. So what is what's the expiration for the cert? Is it valid right now? Two ten twenty twenty. Yeah, it's, it's two... valid. Yeah, it is valid. Okay, because I thought, hey, maybe you haven't done this in a while, so maybe yeah, it's invalid, yeah. right? Um, well, one way we can fix this, 
uh, is we can just deploy this out. Let's just go for it because I'll just push it out to Azure where we're running an HTTPS, right? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's you know, it would have been nice to see it right here. But before we do, I wonder if I should change that setting about the one time just so we can test it the first time. You know what I mean? There was that like, I guess it's in this manifest sometime, someplace where it asked us, oh, you know what? Maybe it's still on Chris's site. Did I close that? Um, now I got a lot of browser windows open. I got to figure out what the heck. Hang on. Why do I have so many? There we go. So, oh, yeah, yeah. When we downloaded it, remember it was on the right side of the screen, and I was I was just forgetting about all that. But, okay. So let's just see if we can. I'm going to go to the top of this thing. And to see if it says something like, um, what do you think it would be under, like retry or something like that? I don't see anything with the word retry. Um, repeat. What is it like hold? It said like hold for, I don't know where it is. So I guess we'll never find it. It's in here somewhere, right? What is it that you're looking for? I was looking for that setting that we said, don't do it on the first try. Oh, it, where was know, it in the manifest? I just thought it would be easier from a debugging standpoint if I could find it in here. But okay. we have no idea where that would be. Um, these are all images. I don't see it in this manifest file. That's the crazy thing. Unless it's in the... Uh, it makes me wonder if it's not in there, right? Maybe it's something to do with couldn't be in here. It makes oh, wait, wait, right here. Yeah, wait, hang on, right here. Lifespan, 15 seconds. Here it is, right here. Okay, good. So I'm going to say skip first is going to be false, okay? It'll just make things a little bit easier, right? And I don't know if minimum sessions is a zero or a one. Oh, what does that I mean? See. I see. He has a I got it. He's got a script. He's got some JavaScript yeah, yeah, that yep. kind of handles this. And all it is, it's just the thing that's going to pop up yeah. our little section over here right. that we dropped on our page. It's actually, you know, it's one of those things that's really simple. It's not just floating at the bottom of our page. It's going to pop up, and now it should pop up on the first try. Um, and, you know, let's see. So I was thinking about just checking in our changes. Look at this, 94 changes. Look at all these things that got added, right? Right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to go for it. Like, So I'm going to go in and say um, PWA stuff, okay? And I'll commit that. Uh, yeah, why didn't it autosave? Hang on. How do you set autosave? Um, well, I mean, not under settings. So I just like to have it set. I'm just thinking them, about oh, here it is right there. Yeah, auto save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I just like it that way. And so I was a little like, how did that get turned off? Yeah, cool. Um, so let's just do this and do that. Yes. I'm going to stage everything and commit everything. Now, hopefully we don't have any rules on here that I can't check into the master branch. I don't think we do. Um, all right, now I'm going to sync this up. Okay, now for some magic, because what's going to happen now, we've talked about this on the show before. Um, somewhere over here, we have a build pipeline that should kick off. I hope it's automatic, but we might have to trigger it. It's this build right here. Um, and we can check it in a minute to see if it's configured to go automatically. First, let's just make sure everything's okay over here. Looks like it finished, right? Yep. So, we might not have ever set it to be automatic. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we've got a build going. The build's going to trigger a release. Oh, Chris, you're frozen. Are you there, Chris? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Your video, is your video frozen? No. Oh, that's weird. In my preview screen, I've got a lot of screens working. Yeah. And in my preview screen, it has you frozen. But um, when I look at the output, you're totally not frozen. I, I apologize for the scare yeah. there. 
Yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm totally, I, I'm totally alive. I'm kind of psyched. I've got like a lot of different things going. I've got this. Um, I would love to show the uh, the light stream screen, but I think if I drag it onto the main screen, will it do that whole crazy like? Yeah, I mean it. It has to. It doesn't but... matter too much, right? Ah. Yeah, yeah. But look at what, what's cool about this here, right? So I've got these different screens. These are the things I can choose from. Mm -hmm. These uh different scenes, right? Like I can switch right. back to the two shot of us, and now it's just the two of us talking, right? Uh, I'm just playing around while the build is going here. I hope that's okay. Um, and I can go back to this shot, and I've got a couple other shots in here that I wasn't sure about. This shows us the stream outputs. So this is what's happening on the stream. Here's the chat right built in. And here's right. a little private chat. So if you're watching this, I can send messages to Chris. I can say, like, I hope the viewers don't know that I don't know what I am doing. <laughs> you know, and I can send <laughs> that over to you, right? And so, you know. That could be like a little private chat during the thing. And I think that's a cool feature, right? And you can see here's Chris's window, Chris's screen share. Like, there's a lot. It's This is pretty cool. This is a website. So I guess what this is is I'm doing this without a capture card, right? Is that what they call it? Yeah, right. You don't have any hardware. It's capturing it right out of your browser, and it's picking up different screens. It's picking up, you know, I've called into it. Yeah, it's so we're amazing. not even using we're not using Skype or Discord no, or this is or cool any kind green of room software. feature yeah. where we assume that if Rich was on with us tonight, he would be yeah. in this thing too. Okay, look, sorry, enough about that, right? Um, we can do a show on that if we want about like how we're doing streaming or something like that. And by the way, um, we're talking about having a get together at Tech Bash, all about um, live streaming and stuff like that. Um, Jeff Fritz and um, uh, who else? Um, uh, well, you know what I think is exciting is, is the idea of having, geez. so we, we know at Tech Bash we're going to stream some sessions, but now yeah. what's happened is the last couple of days we've got the idea of what if we had some panels? Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't right. necessarily have to be when the conference is in session it, because we do have some evening events. Maybe we get people together. And right. so one of the panels that's being considered is uh, some of the top streamers and content creators. What if we get together and talk about that process? And so we've yeah. got like Jeff Fritz, uh, Jason, Tim Van Corey, yeah. Jason Van Brackle. Well, we haven't invited. Tim doesn't know about no, it yet. I don't want no, to say he doesn't. Even, but we're <laughs> going to hopefully but, have him involved. I, I, I was basically he... just thinking, like, who do I know that's at Tech Bash that is a content creator, right? Yeah, you're right. Um, and, and those are the names that we've thought of. Um, and I think there might be some others if we go, we take another trip through the speaker list. But really, um, I, I, it gets you thinking, though, because we have some other expertise that we could probably draw from and maybe do some other interesting panels, right? I mean, it's not, it's a great group of speakers. There's no reason that we yeah. can't come up with, with other ideas. It's just, you know, it, it, I heard that you're kind of busy at Tech Bash. Like, like you have something to do with it. And, and so you've got a lot to do. And so we're just, busy, gonna, yeah. we're just going to stack even more on your plate. That sounds great. Well, you know, a panel <laughs> shouldn't be too hard. And, you know, Luke, you're going to be working at it too. We appreciate you coming out to manage all the streaming stuff. You and Rich Ross will be there. Um, yeah, but it is fun. worth plugging, by the way. Still tickets available for Tech Bash. Um, you get a three-day conference. You can do four if you want with a workshop. There's some great workshops, but a three-day conference with the hotel, and you're still under a thousand dollars. That's yep. not a hard pitch to make to your boss. I mean, I, right. we're proud of that. Like we've we've kept it under that under that thousand dollar mark. Um, and I mean, look at the here's our schedule now. The schedule is, is um, really coming together. You can see like all these different sessions in here. Look, here's a uh, here's a progressive web apps session by Chris Lorenzo. Yeah, he's good, yeah. by the way. He, he you know, that's going to be cool. Here's Tim Corey. You mentioned, you know, Tim Corey. I interviewed also at uh, at Code Camp. Yeah, and did a whole nice uh, long talk with him, and and that'll be up on YouTube soon too. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time on Tech Bash, but TechBash.com, check it out. We hope you'll come. We still have tickets available that you can see all the content that's in here. It's a great event. Um, anyway, let's go back to our build and our release pipeline. Hopefully, went while we were blabbing. Uh, ten, yeah, this is it. It just went. I don't okay. know. It looks green. It's green. So it what I'm going to do uh, is this is our website, and it is showing the nice little lock icon, right? And this time. 
That was pretty fast, I gotta say. That seemed like it didn't fully. Um, well, one thing I'm gonna do now, right So I'm viewing the page source, and I'm seeing. That's what I was about to do. I'm yeah. All of that. Well, I mean, if you wanna, if you no, wanna no, check I mean, it out, you're thinking the same thing I was thinking. All this stuff's in here, right? Yeah. Okay. So it so, didn't pop up. Right. And that might so be. So you know I what's interesting about this now? Yeah, yeah. Here, here is something that we didn't consider, right? That we'll have to consider is how do you debug this? <laughs> and I wouldn't be shocked at all to find that there. And I'm totally making this up. This is just off the top of my head. But I will bet you that either there are tools in the browser dev tools or an yeah. extension that makes this super easy to debug that we just simply don't have any idea what it is. Well, I wonder if there's some. Like, I don't know. See, I'm looking at this stuff right here. Cloudflare.com, jQuery. So maybe, oh, this is a source. Yeah, that should be fine. I'm just wondering if he's referring to, oh, he said something about some libraries that you need to include. Like this thing, JS, add to home screen. And I don't think we installed, we didn't put this in. Right? Oh, the JavaScript to add to home screen. Well, I mean, hit to head to the network tab, and if you've got yeah, some but what I'm saying is I didn't there. see it here. We never, unless it's in Meta somehow. But I don't know if that would make sense. Yeah, let's go back to our. Um, no, I think you're right. Like for example, if I just try to, so there was the the add to home screen. Like if I just try to click it, and say let's view that source, um, it's not coming up. Yeah, look, see, so here's add to home screen. So I think what we need to do, and also is not finding some other, this PWA logo, but that's probably not that big a deal. But it wants to find this add to home screen stuff, mm -hmm. and it's not finding it. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I think we can fix that pretty quickly. Um, what we need to do, though, is find that. And I could have sworn that he said that it was going to add those into, so we can make a note and tell him unless it got dumped into this somewhere. Um, so add to home screen.js. Let's just do what I always do. Add to home. I don't know if that's one of his libraries. When I say him, I'm talking about Chris Love, the uh, godfather of PWAs in the Philadelphia area. Oh, I think it is. Uh, his add to home screen JS, I think, autom it, basically he's, it seems to me that he's written a function yeah. That sort of t just takes care of all this for you. Yeah. So. Um, but I should have done it like this, I think. Because I think when I put the dot in there, it, sometimes it confuses it. Um, no, I did not. Cubix. I don't know if that's the add to home screen. Uh, let's just see if that, like... See this? No. Oh. Okay. I don't think that's it. Let's see if it's right here. <laughs> Look at that. Controlling the add to home screen prompt. Here we go. See this? We didn't get yeah. this. It did not come down in our download. Hmm. Uh, we the got HHS meta. HHS folders not there, huh? I didn't see it. Did we get? Oh, we didn't get this either. We didn't put this. In. I don't remember moving this file either. And and you just don't see them in the. Well, so here's. Oh wait. This is the down. This was the what we uh, extracted. Yeah. So I don't think it's in here. And so we're not getting the, 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 the JavaScript file or – so that's another requirement, right? We don't have that. So even if we if we could do it, it wouldn't work. Yeah, so, so maybe we report some bu uh, report a bug. <laughs> yeah, no, we will. We we, yeah, we don't actually know why. So why then the question is, is there a way we can download that from some other place on his site? I don't know. Um, if I know him, he's got like a blog about it somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, but otherwise, this is a failure. And I don't want it to be. So, so here is like a... 
I just see this little thing here. Let's just see if we can find it. This is where I was before, right? Yeah. <laughs> New details. This is a link. If you're looking at my screen, I'm just trying to scan through this stuff to see if we can yeah, find it. Yeah, I am too. I just, I think the prob problem here is, is how do we find the source for these things? That might be pretty. Yeah. Um... Hmm. Okay. So let's think about this. Where would we find... This is PWA starter. This is the name of the folder. So let's search for that. Maybe we'll find it somewhere. You know what I mean? It's a fairly unique name. <laughs> this is, look at this. This is a demo. That's probably not what we want. GitHub. What do you think? Maybe maybe Chris has it on GitHub. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is him. Uh, wow. Well, I don't know. It is. How do we search GitHub? Let's do like. Um, let's see if he has a GitHub page, right? How do you find someone on GitHub? Find, right? Love to dev, maybe? Does that work? Can you search like that? I don't usually can. search for repos. It just depends on what his repository uh, yeah, sure. is named. Yeah. He used to have a library called Deep Tissue, which I wonder if it's still... I wonder if that we would get be... us there. You see, this doesn't even seem like it's working when I hit enter. Uh, this might be searching my repositories. See that? Let's see if he still has it up on GitHub. Um... I you think I would know how to do this. So but I... Rich says that that he's Doc oh. Love D O C L U V. Oh, well, here GitHub. it is. Yeah, here it is. Look at that. I just typed love to dev and it came up as Doc And there's love. add to home screen. Where add to home screen is one of his repositories. Where do you see that? Um, Are you seeing my screen? You said there it is, so you're not looking at my screen. No, I'm see. looking okay, at my own, which I am, I am sharing there, but... Oh, yeah, let me search your screen. Hang on. It, so. I can actually do that. We can do that. Um, let, oh, let's move this over here so it doesn't freak out the audience here. Okay, let's go to Chris's screen. So he's actually, um, you know, someone else's project he started with, and then it looks like he, uh, it looks like he added here. So like here's source, add to home screen .js and add to home screen min. Cool. So we need those. Yeah. And then we need an example of the um, that other JavaScript file. So why don't you um, want to put that in the chat, and I'll just grab it out of there or something like that. Rich Ross coming in handy with the Doc Love reference. So what's interesting is is that um, you remember you know Mads Christensen. Does everybody know who course, Mads Christensen yeah. is? So he works. Uh, he's worked on Visual Studio tooling, and he had a passion for making web development great in Visual Studio. Well, look at a couple years ago, he had this blog post: "Progressive web apps made easy with ASP.NET Core." Now, granted, this is from 2017, <laughs> um, but he did did have a project. Um, sorry, that's not the project. He had this project called, uh, and it may work just fine, I don't know, called, it's a NuGet package, webessentials.aspnetcore.pwa. Um, I thought like, wow, you know, what if we just go grab it? And it turns out it was last updated three months ago, but I just don't know, I don't, I guess I just don't know what state it's in. Maybe it works fine in 2.0 and maybe not 3.0. You know, we just don't know. But um, it looks like he was thinking the same thing. He was saying, boy, we should make this easier. 
Uh, and we should make it, the other thing was make it a natural experience for a .NET Core developer. Like for example, you know, you add the progressive web app service, just like you would add MVC. Um, right. So interesting stuff, interesting stuff. It doesn't mean, uh, oh, and then it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, that it would just work, but uh, it certainly might be interesting to see what the status of this is. It might work just fine. But, uh, you know, the one thing that's happened very recently is is the move to .NET Core 3. Like, there's an issues list. Makes me wonder if one of them, people are saying, like, wonder how this works. Doesn't work with Blazor. Okay, that's great. So anyways, that was that was my looking there. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'm playing around here a little bit. So let me just do... Um, let me just finish what I'm doing and I can switch back well, to my Well, that got me wondering what the state of Web Essentials is because there was a time when Web Essentials was practically... Like, it was super popular and you pretty much downloaded it right after you installed Visual Studio. Oh, yeah. And I got to thinking, like, well, I wonder what's happened. So there is a Web Essentials 2019... Um, I think that a lot of his work has made its way into the core product. So maybe it's not what it once was, but uh, I am seeing, I'm still, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff in here. So very interesting. Cool. Keep talking. Very interesting. But, and then here's this 2019 thing, but you know, it hasn't been touched for seven months now. That's interesting stuff. I, I don't know. And you know, isn't it, isn't it, I think it's weird that you judge whether or not you should take an open source project and work with it based on whether like the last commit was last week or last month or last year or last decade. And I'm telling you, it doesn't take very long anymore. If the last commits like seven months ago, you go, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't, maybe nobody's paying attention to this, which is kind of a funny way to look at it because maybe that just means that the project's done and stable, you know? Yeah, that's just, right. Just, is it, just the wait, fact that wait, wait, nobody's wait. What was committing like every day. You just used a word that I'm not familiar with. A project being stable? Done. Stable, done? Done. Yeah. Right. No Is that more a thing? To do? It should be um, a thing. I think it's probably bad that it's not a thing in, right. in our industry. Well, I switched back to my screen. And so in JavaScript here, I added the add to home screen pages, okay? Okay. So that should work. But we still need the... Um, where is it? I got too many pages open here. We still need the. Um, oh, and maybe it's supposed to be at that path too. Maybe I should have put it under that folder, but we can fix that in a sec. We still need the SWJS, right? So, um, what's the? If I go back to my home page for my um, layout and look for add to home screen, is it looking at for? No, it's just going right to JS. So that's going to find that. Okay. Um, but what we need is that, um, that other file now. So do me a favor while I'm setting this up. Can you see if you can do that same magic and find the, uh, it's, it's called, um, the SWJS file, the, uh, service worker. I think you'll be able to find one of those. I want to see if maybe his, what I was hoping was, is that what makes that service worker generator go is just sitting in GitHub. Um, yeah, I'm thinking as an example of it in one of his same same things that we're just looking at. Um, what happened? Oh, that's that other browser. God, I got too many windows open. Um, so is this thing... I think we're really close too, by the way. Like, I think this is going to work. We just didn't get those core things. Yeah, so it's looking for this SWJS, right? Um, where are we going to get that SWJS? It's, he said it's just like a vanilla um, service worker. So maybe we can just look for a service worker. Yes, you know, something like that. I don't know. How about we do PWA requirement service worker? Is that one word? Probably a service worker. All right, we're getting close here. Um, I'm just looking at like one of these fundamentals. Maybe we'll see like the file. 
because I saw it on one of his. I've seen it somewhere already. Um, this is an example that I saw before. Where's the service worker? Let's see. If... Uh, hmm. Is it this? No, that can't be the service worker. Serviceworker.js is what he's calling it here. So let's just see if I can find it. Are you there? Yeah. You're quiet. Yep. I'm okay. just trying to find an example, and I, I can't really find one. I think we're going to find one. Here it is, public serviceworker.js. See this thing? Okay. You think it's this? No, this can't be the whole thing. This is part of public serviceworker.js. Wait, it's a link. Aha. Well, I don't know if this is going to have things in there that's going to mess us up, but it might not. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to take this for now, okay? Okay. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way, too. Copy and paste. And we drop it in here. And so if we go back to the layout page, um, then registration service service worker dot register. Do I have to have a register method? No, that's so that's asking the browser to register it. Okay. So do we think this could do anything? I mean, I have no idea. You know, <laughs> I'm totally like, I don't know. I've. I will tell you what, I have one other idea before I commit that change, okay? On one of his pages where he, I thought it was Chris talked about it, or maybe it was this other article, there was like an example of what the server, here it is. This one might have the basic service worker. Manifest, I'm just scrolling down through this thing. Service worker. No example. Here it is. Here it is. This is their basic service worker. Okay. Okay. And something tells me that this is caching a few files and stuff like that, but I don't know. Let's just try it. Okay. Somewhat for some reason, I feel better about that than this. Although it might be the exact same thing. All right has two event listeners. It's listening for install. I say we go for it, okay? Because it's getting a little late. It's 10, <laughs> 10 o'clock. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, adding service worker and add to home screen. Okay. And now we're doing that. And then we're doing, oh, this is slow for some reason. You notice that? I'll push that. That should kick off our builds and our releases. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to run a build right now. What do you want to talk yeah. about? Builds? Any ideas? Azure Pipelines is, is awesome, and it builds things. <laughs> now, um, don't have a lot so, prepared on that topic. So head over to um, the site again while it's, go ahead and head over there while it's, uh, it doesn't to matter if it's the old one to, to the yeah, yeah. site that you're trying to turn oh, into sorry. a into yeah, a progressive web app. Here, I think. Yep. And I guess if you go to the Chrome Dev Tools, and apparently there's like an application menu. Is that right? Yeah, I see it right here. Okay. Is there something that says manifest in here? Yeah. Yeah. So click on that, and I think this is a way oh, that you can debug. So this is how you can start to try and debug like what's going uh, on. Did you just read about that just now? Yeah, I've been trying to figure out like how there's, cool there must is. be like, a way to debug this, right? You can't it's... people can't just figure this out by magic. There has to be a way to figure it out. So No, but this so is so cool is, that you just figured is... it out while we're doing the stream, well, right? Yeah, so this is telling us what's in the manifest. Okay, now what is it complaining about? Saying there's no matching service worker. Yeah, well, we know that, right? That's perfect. So we now if that. you go to the service workers thing on the left, what does that say? 
It's right underneath manifest. Yeah, I, I just don't it. know what I'm, it says. Yeah, I'm clicking it. I don't think it's working because they're it, wait. Maybe because they're okay. And it's so telling us it's uh, expecting this, but it's got okay. two errors. SW.js. Yeah. Well, right. good news is we just added that file. And what's really interesting here is look, you can test from within the dev tools. You could push wow. and sync out to the service worker. So That's I feel cool. like I feel like this is leading us towards like here's the practical stuff you need to know to work on this. It's one thing to read the docs and the yeah. docs say like, oh, it's easy, man. Just add this file in. But no, no, no. Yeah. I got to go to work now. And when you go to yeah. work, um, things aren't going to work right. And so what do we how do, what do we use to get it to, to peek inside the box and figure out what's happening? So. Yeah, I just noticed a uh, comment from Rich in the chat. I'm not doing a great job of paying attention, but. He wrote, what could go wrong? And I assume it was when I was just saying, like, hey, let's just go for it. Let's yeah, just, just do this. You know? mean, that's the worst let's thing just run happen. this. Yeah, what could go wrong? So um, look it, at this. It, this is cool. This is a good find because this is important stuff for what we're doing. Um, it, might also, be, yeah, go ahead. it might be interesting to use these tools, these tools that that basically like help us figure out what's going on in, in the box, but to do it with a very basic static web application, just like, you know, your index HTML and, and a JavaScript, just to like, okay, you've proven it out. We Now we know what the browser wants. Mm -hmm. How do we get that into a .NET Core application, especially a server-side framework like MVC or Razor Pages? Yeah, sorry, I just because, want to see um, where my, how this thing is doing here. Um, it is running the release now. Sorry, keep going. Okay, yeah, I'll know, switch back. I just wanted to see where we were. Because you know, I, I I think I think that it would be very easy for somebody to say, "Well, what are you using an ancient framework like that?" Right? It's all it's all spas these days. You should be using React or Angular or whatever. And I I think those are fine solutions. But the reality is, and I'm not just talking ASP.NET here, is that we have server side frameworks and they're popular and they run a lot of the web. It could mm -hmm. be PHP based. It could be uh, Django over on the Python side. Uh, it could be Java stuff like Spring, or in our world, you know, ASP.NET server side frameworks. Or what we now have are two brand new or a brand new framework, you know, Blazor, which does is server side as well. Right. Uh, how, there's got to be ways to make this work, and and also to be able to debug it. And uh, that's the part I think is missing. I, I don't feel like that instruction manual has been written or we just didn't find it tonight. Mm. So, um, I, I, yeah, this is cool. Um, I was going to hit F5 and reload this page. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that happens? And I'm on this tab here, and I'm just hoping to see that this error gets fixed right off the bat. You know, like that would be really cool. I hope I put it in the right spot. I think it was at the root. I think that was okay. Um, that didn't seem to go away. It still says no magic service worker detected. I wonder. Well, look at your network tab and see if it got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good thinking. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see what else didn't, you know, we also want to make sure that the, so now. Well, the problem is. The, the, oh um, man! Oh, we didn't have the CSS. Well, that shouldn't matter too badly. Well, maybe it will. It might, but this should have worked. You know. Um, disable the cache, maybe. Well, I hit Control F five. That should clear it, right? You're right. Yeah, yeah. Now, is it? Did I do something dumb like spell it wrong, Ed? I mean, this is good. This is an example of what you know, real world problems right it's never as simple as as we think it's going to be and i think it's pretty good add to home screen min.js oh. is it a dash under minute for minute it was wasn't it i don't remember oh dot oh, i'm an idiot the other thing is we don't have the css file and there could be something in there that i would i would hope it would just render out like no matter what you know but all right so i screwed that up um oh darn it that stinks um what about the 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 other thing the min the js file that we're looking for so is. the service worker isn't i don't know that it's something i wonder how it shows up in the network tab because that's declared somewhere it's right else, here see right? this here's well, look here it is 
It got it. It's got a little gear next to it, by the way. Okay. So it, it says pending, though. Yeah. What does yeah. that mean? Pending. It means it maybe it doesn't get it until later. I, I don't know, right? We could search for service worker as pending, but in the meantime, I'm going to go and rename this thing. Ah, I did a dash. That was, that was lame. Um, well, let me just commit that change, right? Um, I also wonder if there's something about this service worker that's not like something that was specific to the other project that we're not using. I think this is like the standard stuff. When the browser fetches a URL, it just like intercedes it. That's what the service worker does. The service worker allows it to work offline. And anytime the browser executes a fetch, like we might have a, a uh, an API call that we're doing from our from our app back to the server. And this service worker says, is there a fetch going on back to the server? And I guess, right. now I don't, I'm not, I'm just guessing because I've heard a little bit about this. It kind of says, do I want to intercept that fetch and work offline or do I want to let it go back to the server and work online? I think it's kind of how it works, right? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it does, right? Is it says, do I, you know, if I can't fetch, yeah, then work, maybe the resources are saved in your, uh, in your uh, local storage. You know, yeah, it yeah, seems right. to that that would be what you'd have to do. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you what. Let me um let me just, you know, uh changed name. Let's just do that. And it's possible that like one of these little this stupid error could be affecting the other thing, but I because I don't understand why the um let's let that go for a minute here. I don't understand why what this means this little gear you, you ever see that little gear here Let's no and i'm wondering if that has to do with this whole like what does that mean i don't know um you know just because we've declared and downloaded a service worker maybe we haven't given it permission to start yet because we haven't we haven't installed the app you know we haven't done right. or, or whatever it is that makes this service worker pop up and say yeah i, I can work now yeah, so that might not, it might not be a problem that that's not there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back to builds and, um, you know, what I should have done is queued up Chris Love to call in and <laughs> he would have us working on this already. It would work. He could have been our, like, you know, phone a friend, like, you know, I'm stuck and uh, it'd be cool. I should... Um, anyway, let's see, this thing is going, I'm on shared, uh, you know, pools and stuff here. So it's going to sometimes a little slow. I'm still, I'm with this for a couple more minutes. What do you think? Yeah. Let's see what happens here. And if, uh, if it doesn't work out, then, then you know, we've... I'm interested in knowing, and this might be a little research to do, you know, during the week, I'm interested in knowing like. There has to be a story for .NET developers here that might be a little bit more involved in like here you you know manually add this code in. I guess what I'm getting at is is that when I see what Mads Christensen is working on, I'm like that sounds more like what I would expect. But is something official happening, you know, um, hmm. or or is it always or I don't want to say always like what's what's the plan for? Uh, for apps here. In the, yeah, in the, I know. And I also want to be world. careful that like, did I screw something up when we did this and unchecked something? I certainly don't want to say that Chris's tool wasn't working properly because it's very possible that I did something dumb along the way, right? Um, so I just want to sort of put that in there because um, I think it did a lot for us, really good stuff. So let's just see the build. Um, spinning through here, just about done. Okay, good. 
And so our release should kick off in a sec. And the release is pretty quick, I think, also. Um, yeah. So, hey, if you're watching this and you think, those guys are running into some problems here, just like what happens at my job, then subscribe and like, and because we're regular <laughs> people, right? I yeah, mean, I, right. I like to say this is such a perfect demo. You should subscribe and you should like. But you know, like what we're we're this is what we're trying to do on the show is is do live coding, and and see how it goes when we do this kind of stuff. Um, it did finish, so let's go back to here. Let's do a refresh, and so we know that the JavaScript. I mean, we know that the CSS is going to fail. What the? Oh, it's the CSS. Yeah, CSS failing. The This logo thing we know isn't showing up, and so that could be a problem because it could be an empty. Um, look, look, look. So something's not working right, but here's this. This is probably because the CSS didn't get installed, and it's not hiding this thing. Yeah, but still, there it is. <laughs> So let's yeah, because we don't so, have the CSS file. But go, wanted... Let's let's take a look at what the browser thinks now. I'm just right. curious now. Yeah, that right. seems to me like. Uh, well, let's talk see. about Anyways. this. This the this application. Part here. Yeah, so the service worker still didn't work, but that add to home screen did show up. Well, it might have been there before, but see, it still says no matching service worker. Yeah, detected. so it wasn't able to figure out the service worker stuff. What we need I to think... do is, what do you think? Go ahead. Well, I think it might be interesting to see the progress of this project that Mads has because it, I'm seeing it in several searches. Um, people who've blogged about like, hey, get started with progressive web apps and ASP.NET Core. Almost invariably, they say, so let's go get this NuGet package. Now, um, you know, NuGet packages and, and libraries are great. And then if you find out, you know, that maybe they're not being kept up anymore, then they're not so great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it's not kept up. It's just it, what makes it strange is when I look at Mads, when I look at the repository on GitHub, I'm seeing that it was last touched uh, two months ago. There was a change made. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that it's updated for .NET Core 3, but maybe that's okay. Maybe, it, maybe there's no, you know, these are just the services. Maybe it's going to work just fine. I don't mm -hmm. know. Right. But, um, but, 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 you know, you got me thinking about something here because, you know, you said before, well, so we haven't installed it. So maybe this, this information we're looking at here, maybe this is changes when we've actually clicked the install button. Then maybe it goes and gets the cert. Like I'm willing to try clicking this. Maybe nothing happens, but I'm clicking it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I don't think anything happened, quite frankly. Um. this this is all that's the other thing okay yeah so i don't think anything happened i'm sure i did something wrong <laughs> um it's kind of bummer because this was going pretty well um i just want to see what does the click do on the layout there's a button Oh, well, it's not going to work. Oh, wait, we got this, though. We have the JavaScript file, right? Yeah. So I guess when we click it, wait, maybe it's not. Let's just go back to the button. Where's the button? Install this PWA. Oh, wait. did we? Is this wired up? ATH banner cell button. Button cancel, button link. So where is the, oh, maybe that's down here. Hang on. Um, shouldn't there be something that tells that button to do something? Yeah, I, you can imagine that button was wired up somehow. Unless it's in here, like one of those start things, like an auto... Uh,
Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is a pretty big file here. Like maybe he's expecting the button to be called. Um, no, that wouldn't make sense. I don't think this button is wired up to do anything. Huh. Uh, there must be some, well, there's got to be some piece of code that runs that wires it up, right? And we're just not. Yeah, there's this script, and I thought maybe the script would do it, but how would the script know which button to wire up? Unless it's based on this thing here. Huh. I don't know. Well, what do you think? Well, I think you gave it a good run. <laughs> For something Give that neither try. of us have ever tried before, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm going to basically, let's see, let's go back and switch screens here. And here we are. Well, so progressive web apps. I mean, I, I'm still convinced. So just because we didn't make it work, I'm still convinced that this progressive web app stuff is worth looking into further. How about right. you? Well, that's why I'm a little surprised that this isn't either built into the ASP.NET Core templates or is a little bit easier because um, I don't think we're not talking about some flash in the pan thing. Like for just to give you an example, I installed the Twitter progressive web app on my phone yep. because it said add to home screen. And I said, sure, I'm, I'm not planning to go back ever. I yeah. don't, I prefer, I've long preferred things. I don't have to install from the stores. Right. Um, and I just, I don't feel like, I mean, yeah, look, there's a ton of apps. I've even got more apps on my phone than I probably remember, but one of the reasons why, and it wasn't because I was being stubborn. One of the reasons why I think I was able to hang on to my Windows phone as long as I did is I simply didn't care at all for apps. <laughs> like, I just didn't care. I, yeah. I want, I think, now granted, some things feel like they deserve to be apps. Like, to give you an example, like a traffic app. Okay. I, I But although, <laughs> if you if you talk to Chris, he might say, I don't know. Everything's everything's available. I, I, I don't know. But, um or a game like a high performance game fine but you know for most retailers that want you to install their app i i hate it because i say oh, i don't why why well, i generally it just, just don't I, I generally yeah. don't because i i feel like yeah why isn't it just a website um however uh you know yeah right so we, we both kind of feel the same way but the the but the fact I'm thinking about it from a development perspective, right? yeah, from, exactly. as a developer, I don't want to learn more skills. No. And I think that um, this is, is a really good solution towards getting that first class, like installed ish experience. But, um, and I so think what I'll we're on the hunt out. for, yeah. we're on the hunt for here is how do we make this work for the ASP net developer? And I want to, I like to, I want to stress in, in, in a way that makes that is natural for that developer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what the docs are saying, which is saying you gotta have this manifest and you gotta give us a service worker, but it's doing it from the base level, you know, just like, oh, it's super easy to just throw whatever HTML and JavaScript you want in there. It, it's not that you can't have HTML in an MVC app, but an MVC app lives in the world of views, razor views, you know? And same thing with Razor Pages. Okay. And even when we talk Blazor, Blazor's component model. So uh, not that I think it would be hard in Blazor. It sounds to me, this sounds like a component, a component that you know, you probably have your add to home screen component or something that maybe right. you knows how to talk to a service and that service. But what we're missing here is the easy way for an ASP.NET developer to fire up uh, a service worker to get this stuff linked in and to do it in a way that's very natural to them, which it looked to me like that's what Mads was trying to do in the NuGet package. It might be interesting to see this, the status of that, especially for, for .NET Core 3. So, 
Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to play with this offline. Rich says, yeah. you know, it's definitely time to claim victory. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I think I'm going to play with this and see if I can fix this. And I don't know yeah. if, if we're able to, if I can do that. Can I put like an addendum on this video, like attach it? So can we edit a video once? Seriously, like if a video is on YouTube, you, you can't, can't change it, it once no. it's up, right? Because then you lose right. all your stats and stuff like that, right? Yeah. You basically, like when you once you push it up, that's it. You have to delete it or hide yeah. it. And uh, but I mean, you know what? We can revisit it another time. Yeah. Well, hopefully on the next. Um, yeah. Rich says just push a second video, and that's that's what we we could do. So hopefully by uh, next week's show, maybe I'll have an answer um, yeah. on what I did wrong. But I don't think um, I don't think it changes my mind. You know about the thing. It's just figuring out how to do it. And you know what? Figuring out how to do stuff. This is a great example. How like you know. Um, you watch the demos and you, you know, you go back and you say, you know, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Right. You know? And right. I didn't even follow. I'm just thinking now, like I wasn't really being really careful, but there's this beginner's guide and I could have just followed this thing along as well. And I'm wondering if there's some instruction. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sharing my screen again, but this shows you basically, you know, it's another one of these. Uh, let's see. So I this, guess what you're saying is instead of using, using the generator, which is this great full featured thing that gives you, I mean, it gave us all those icons and stuff yeah. is what if you did the simplest thing possible that is right. still a progressive web app yeah. and integrated it into an ASP.NET MVC application, which yep. I think is currently a 2.2 application. So maybe it's 2.1, I don't remember. So we got to have the whole talk about, okay, how do we get that to three, right? Mm. So, but that doesn't have to happen right now. That's the great thing is that- right. Is that in? Uh, is, it, is it can be a future show? So, yeah, another con more air is another idea for a show. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're watching the, show. <laughs> the screen right now, don't forget that every show is archived on YouTube at video.thedevtalkshow.com, and that'll take you straight to the YouTube channel, and you can watch everything we've ever done. Um, it's a great way to catch up with what's going on. But what's really fun is to be here live on Mixer, Twitch, or YouTube. On Except Wednesdays today. at eight thirty. Well, you know, today we didn't get the, them up, but but we're only on we're mixer using the point, a yeah. different technology that actually did some nice things for us, right? It solved a lot of the issues about our our remote call, being able yeah. to see each other, and being able to share our screens, which were challenges for two or more um, speakers. They're not impossible, yeah, but they were challenges. And if the future of this show is to invite guests um and and we can make it easy for them which you know I, I think giving a guest a link they log in we probably have to help them a little bit through the beginning but but the reality is is that we're not asking any special software to be installed so this could be really valuable for a remote scenario when we can't make it into the studio which you know we like to do but just tonight it wasn't an option and that'll happen so yeah I mean, snowstorm or whatever, boom, keep the yeah. show running. Yep. So, all right, Andy. Well, it was fun. It was fun. I'm glad I got to learn about the tools that are inside the browser. I figured there had to be some. So that application yeah. menu, I won't forget it. We saw love to dev.com, which is L O V E two D E V dot com. We, um, we did have it there in the chat and probably we should remember to put it in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube, but, um, make sure that you, uh, that if you want to see more of this content, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and let us know that, that this is what you want to see. Or if you have any advice for us or questions about progressive web apps, add them to the comments and we'll try to, to gather those up and talk about them in a future show. That's a good idea. We should do that. Yeah. And if you know how to fix what we did wrong. Yeah. Then send, <laughs> you know, send a pull, send a comment. I wish I could say send a pull request, yeah. but I don't think the live, the, the website's out there yet, but I think Not it yet, will be. Yeah. It will be. All so. right. All right, Andy. Well, hey. Uh, by the way, thanks to Rich Ross, who's not exactly with us tonight, but he's there in the chat. Yeah. And he's been watching along. And uh, he's out of town, which is why we're not in the studio. But uh, he's still with us. And he, we had some uh, technical difficulties getting him on this thing, but not because of the – just some stuff. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, those of us speaking in a couple of weeks at a little conference called Tech Bash uh, are very busy, but um, we'll, we should be here next Wednesday. So, so what we I'm do is we say goodbye and we say we'll, we see you all next time. All Have right. a good night. <laughs>